Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Pastor Amos Dada. And um, by the grace of God, I'm the District Superintendent of Christ Apostolic Church, Better Toronto. And also the convener of the International Gathering of Eagles Conference. This is a global conference that... Um, strategic leadership conference that we run across the globe uh, building Christians, building church leaders, building God's people to become uh, more focused and more of the Christian that God wants us to be as much as possible and um, today my focus is to answer the question because most times when I go they ask me how do I become an ego Christian how do I become an ego believer and um, I want to thank God for such questions or for such people and um, I do hope that you are able to Gain one or two things from what I want to say. <clears throat> Life is about continuous learning. First of all, let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you for a time like this. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word with your people uh, through this opportunity of Periscope and uh, other avenues, YouTube, and whichever way they are getting it. Lord, thank you for the power in the word of God. Thank you because it is not to showcase ourselves. It is to help somebody somewhere to know more about you, to mature in you, and to serve you as you want us to be. And so, Lord, I pray this hour that your Holy Spirit will take absolute control in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we bless and pray that, Lord, everyone that will listen to this message will become an ego Christian, become a strong believer in Christ, and grow in Christ, and mature in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, I want to throw light on the fact that most times we talk about egos, egos, ego, and uh, People say, why don't you just be direct? Why, do, why are you using the word ego? Well, I'm not the one who created ego. I'm not the one who put ego in the Bible. I just resonate with it, and uh, I will explain more about that as we go. But there's something about the ego bird that you and I know that is majestic is splendid is full of splendor the ego board has distinguished itself in a way that i believe that is why people gyrate or see it as something they can use to project quality the ego bear speaks in many ways of quality quality of vision dexterity in terms of movement sweetness in terms of things and all manner of ways by which anyone can you know say that look he wants to be i know as human beings we are more superior than birds we are more superior than other lower animals but the ego bear stands in a class the ego bear stands in a particular high level pedestal in human Kosher, humanity and the earth it, that all the way the Bible refers to it, makes it to stand, you know, in a peculiar way. Let me say, for instance, start from where we normally use as our basis when we are talking about ego believers. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. That very popular verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So, if there is one thing we can say from that place, the eagle bird speaks about strength. So we are talking about becoming a, 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 an eagle believer. We are talking about a Christian gathering strength. Becoming mature, becoming standard, you know, running without getting tired, swiftly doing things. Hallelujah. And I'm praying that by the time you have watched this, you too will become an eagle believer. You'll be able to achieve things uh, with ease to the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm praying that by the time God gives you the grace, your vision in life, your vision for God, your, your, your determination to do the things of God will stand out. You know, as that scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, the, the word of God you are listening to will renew your strength. Because I believe by watching this uh, message and uh, listening to it, you are waiting on the Lord. No people will say it is about fasting and so on and so forth. No, even meditating on the word of God, taking time to hear the word of God is about waiting on the Lord. You are waiting on God to do what? To teach you. You are waiting on God to build you up. And that's what the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm praying that your strength from this hour will be renewed. Hallelujah. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. In other words, by the time you Go with this word, you will be able to soar, you will be able to move ahead, you will be able to glide. You know, the eagle bear doesn't fly, flapping his fingers like that. No, he just soars. He allows the Holy Ghost to carry him. I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will begin to carry you as you begin to listen to this word. And you become the mature Christian that God wants you to be. And the Bible says in this verse that they shall run and not be weary. Uh, I'm praying that by the time you get the gist of this message, you understand the concept we are sharing, you will be running the Christian race without being weary. It doesn't matter the storm, it doesn't matter the challenges, you will be gliding, you will be smoothly moving ahead in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> it says you shall walk and not faint. In other words, you will not backslide. So what we are saying, becoming an ego Christian, is simply making the fact of life clearer. I want to start by explaining how do I become a Christian. How do I become a Christian? I know that's uh, a, 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 something that a lot of people might say, Oh yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But you know, the, 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 the life we live, the time we are, Christianity has become such a complex word, oversimplified, that they see us, we bear the name, there is no difference with us. And this is a sorry case. So it needs to be redefined, who is a Christian? How do we become a Christian? Is Christianity just about going to church? Is it about going to work? Is it because we are born of Christian parents? Or we are born in a, a, in a community that is dominated by more Christians than is Muslims or Buddhists and so on? No. Christianity is a life in itself. It's a life tailored after God is a life that uh, we can say by all means pattern after Christ. Christ is the Son of God that God sent to this world to die for you and I, to give us all the things that we need to become children of God, to become the people of God. I'm not going to be taking too much of scriptures, but there are two scriptures or three that I want to use to make known how to become Christians, how to become a Christian. Number one 
is John, I mean Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, uh, permit me to read from verse 8. He said, But what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the, word, the Lord Jesus Christ, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be saved, shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. So, we start from that place, uh, verse 8 there. He said, the word is nigh thee. In other words, as I'm speaking now, the word you hear, this is the word of life. Everything that is on this earth, came through the world, even the earth, the waters, the the the, uh, the atmosphere, the heavens. The Bible says in the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. How did he make it? By speaking into existence. So, and the Bible says, the world is nigh thee. So, this world we are hearing now is what will make you to become a Christian. If you believe it, if you accept it, hallelujah. And so it says in that place, uh, the word we preach, and that's what I'm doing. I'm preaching the word of God to you to enable you, if you have not, if you are not yet a Christian, to become a Christian. If you are a Christian, then the latter part is for you how to stabilize, how to become an ego Christian, a standard Christian, a reliable Christian, a dependable Christian, a good citizen. That when you say you are a Christian and you are a husband, everybody knows you carry dignity. If you say you are a Christian and you are found in position of power in your country, in your nation, everybody can resonate and there is an expected standard that they have. Because the ego is not just a wishy-washy bird. It, it, it distinguishes itself from every other bird. So what we are talking about is that when we become a, a, a Christian, even the, the unbelievers, they have a standard that they are expecting from you. But the first thing we are doing is, how do I become? How do I get born into the family of God? Assuming we have not been. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ. So who is the Lord Jesus Christ that we confess? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. The Bible says, for that he has not come to condemn. So this message is not to condemn you, it's not to put you down, it's not to embarrass you, it's to actually make your life better. It's to help you to become what God wants you to become. And so that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the third personality of God. In the Christian fold, we have what is called the Trinity God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, it was more or less about God the Father in action. In the New Testament, we saw the conception, the, 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 the conception without the human angle, the human factor, you know, the Holy Ghost overshadowing uh, uh, Mary and giving birth to Jesus, who also has no sin in his head because it's the seed of Abraham, this, I mean the seed of Adam that makes us sinful, which Jesus did not have. So, Jesus is the Son of God. is also God. For the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, He is the one who created all things, but He is the Son which person who came. So, He is the progenitor. He is the all in all. He is the one that stands. Even though He calls Himself the door to the kingdom, He is still the kingdom. He is the king of the kingdom. He is the king of kings. We as Christians, we are kings and priests, but God has sent him as the king. So, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is getting more technical now. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, it is about Jesus 
when he came, he was born of Mary. He went about, he was born in the land of the Palestinians. He was of the Jewish race, the Israelites. And uh, he, 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 he went about helping people. The Bible says, Acts chapter 10, that it, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What you will have thought that somebody doing good will be what? Will be <laughs> respected, healed, you know, but no. The religious leaders of those days, the Sahedrin, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they hated him. They hated him, and uh, some, of, of course, also loved him in the sense that they saw him because he has charisma, he has power of God, he was doing miracles, they wanted him to become what? Their king. But when he made it clear to them that, look, my kingdom is not to come and sit down in one throne in Israel, you know, and be you know, delivering them, helping them to fight wars against Roman Empire and so on. That, look, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's a kingdom whereby people will be, you know, that have been alienated, people that have been delineated from God, people that have been separated from God. He wanted to reconcile them to God. He wanted to bring them back to God. The people back out. And then they began to frame him up. They began to do everything. So, uh, long story short, they crucified him. And when they crucified him, he did what? He was there and died. They killed him. And on the third day, he did what? He arose. It's a long story, but that's the summary of it. That's why the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Because that's the key factor. There are many versions of uh, uh, so-called Christian sects who will even tell you that they even believe that the same Jesus that was dead was the one that was raised. So the Bible is saying that if you want to be a Christian, even though you are not born there, as I was not born there at that time, there was there's something you can talk about. It is belief. And when we are talking about belief, we are talking about what you have not seen. It's not that people didn't see him while he was here. But, I mean, if I, I have my phone with me, and I can't say I, I believe I have a phone. No, I believe things that I've not seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, that's what we are talking about. So, it is about believing that Jesus raised, because nobody was there, how God raised him. But the good thing was that Jesus made it clear that, look, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it. He was making it clear to them, he said, as he was giving them instances that as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so would the, the Son of Man be. You know, so he gave them, he spoke so much in parables. But the bottom line was that this Jesus was crucified, this Jesus died. And why was he crucified? And what is the purpose of the crucifixion? The crucifixion is to do what? Is to help us get out of sin. Because on that cross, he carried human sin. The sin of humanity. All the sins you have committed, all the sins you will ever commit, was imputed to him, was carried unto him. And the Bible says it was so intense that even though it was God, he had an agreement with Father that, look, when you do this work, I cannot behold sin. And so he carried this sin. And so he is the one who um, God has used to wipe away our sin. For the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. Praise the Lord. So that's why it is important that you, you want to believe in him so that he can carry away your sin. He can take away my sins. Hallelujah. And believe him. And there is a, a, a thing about Christianity is that if Jesus was not raised... Our preaching is in vain. That's why it is important that you must believe that he was raised from the dead. And that's what does that also mean is that because life is that as long as you are on this earth, you are going to die. Live like Methuselah. Live more than Methuselah. 1,000 years, you will still die. And when you die, where do you go? And that is another day story. So, that's, God was making it clear to us that there is another life after this one. And that life is what Christ has come 
to prepare you for that the spiritual angle. It's not that we will live that life only in heaven. He wants us to be what he wants us to be, to co to be co-partners with him on earth. And so verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. So, for you to become a Christian is to believe this story I've just told you. You can do more research about it. You can read more about the Bible. But you have to be, the concept is that you have to believe that Jesus died for your sins. And you believe it in your heart and you confess it. There are a lot of people say, well, I just told my life and somebody preached. No, no, there must be a public confession. There must be a day that you say you encounter God. I gave my life to Christ. I keep saying it in February 10, 1977. And that is a public confession that I did after an encounter with him. You need to do that one. And it goes further in this place to, to make it clear that, look, for the scriptures say, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So it's giving you the, the advantages, you know, that you will never be ashamed. I pray you will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. For there is also no difference between the Jews and the Greek. For the same Lord is rich unto all that is. So it doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your gender. You need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior for you to become a Christian. And for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second uh, scripture I want to also talk about uh, in talking about giving our lives to Christ is John chapter John chapter 3, well-known passage, where the phrase, being born again, comes off from. Hallelujah. John 3. Yeah. There was a man, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dress except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is like Jesus said, look, let's not waste time here. You are interested in going to the kingdom of God. You are interested in, uh, in uh, being part of what God has created you to be. There is something you need to do. You need to be born again. And the story goes further. Verse 4, Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter into the second time, into his mother's womb and be born? And um, he was talking like a lawyer. He was talking technically. He was talking legally. He was talking practically. You know about how, how, how can this happen? And Jesus was saying, look, this is a spiritual phenomenon. Look at verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. A lot of young Christians have asked me, what does it mean to be born of water? Well, water is used here figuratively. Water is about the word. The word you can put in this way must be born of the word and of the spirit. You know, the word, the word you are hearing. That's why the Romans chapter 8 was talking, the word is nigh thee. It is the word of God. And Jesus is the word of God himself. And also about the spirit, about the Holy Spirit. It is you hearing the word and in combination with the spirit. You know, in John chapter 16 verse 7, he says... Jesus was talking to his disciples before he left. He said, it's expedient for you that I go. If I do not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. But when I'm gone, the Holy Spirit will come and will convict you of sin, of righteousness, and of what? Of judgment. And verse 8 says, and, uh, of righteousness and of judgment. So, it is the Holy Spirit that will do the conversion. So, to be born again is that the word of God will come to you, the Holy Spirit will convict you, and you accept Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I, I hope that simplifies the, what looks as a, a complex thing there. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It's, so he's saying that it is the combination of the personality of Christ who represents the word, 
uh, which uh, is talking about water here, but he's talking about the word which is of himself, and he's talking about the spirit, which is about the spirit of God. When you hear the word and the Holy Ghost convicts you and you accept Jesus, that's what makes you born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We'll explain that further. But what he's saying here in verse 6 there is that, look, when you are born of your parents, it was of the flesh. Your parents copulated, gave birth to you. That's of the flesh. That's what makes you born. And that's why I say born again. So you are born. Now you are born again. You are now your spirit is regenerated. The spirit of God comes upon you. And so the flesh is the flesh. That's the flesh coming together. Now it's the spirit and the word coming together to make you what? Born again. Marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. The wind blows earth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. That is mean that when you accept Jesus as your Lord, the Holy Spirit is the one who will be guiding you. The Holy Spirit will be the one in charge of your life, controlling your life, directing you, and He can take you where He wants you to be. He can give you assignment. You will have to follow the assignment. He will help you to fulfill your divine purpose, and so on and so forth. The third uh, scripture uh, that um, will also help us in understanding uh, becoming a Christian is John one twelve. John one twelve. John one twelve. John one twelve says, "But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name." which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Praise the Lord. So, two things are clear here. Coming over from where we saw, we say, he that is born of the flesh is of the flesh, he that is born of the spirit. So, that's verse 13. They are trying to explain to us that, look, this being born again is not of the flesh, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. It's not because... Your father wanted to have a child. That's what makes you born again. No, that's what makes you to be born at all. That's what makes you human. That's what makes you a man or a woman. Hallelujah. And that is not, uh, that's according to your decision, your parental decision, not of God's decision. But verse 12 now says, But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. So being born again is about receiving this Jesus whom you have not seen, whom you have not met, who died for you on the cross, receiving him to your life. And to them he gave power to become the sons of God. So when you receive him by that believing in your heart, as I said in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 13, and you confess it with your mouth, you now have the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. You now become a child of God. It's not about your feeling. It's not about whether you feel good or you don't feel good. No, 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 no. It is that you have fulfilled the condition. You have, uh, you have identified him as Christ who can save you, as Christ who is the one who was sent of God to die for you on the cross of Calvary, as the one who was raised from the dead. And then you say to yourself in your heart, nobody sees your heart. It's, 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 it's within you and your God. You see your heart, and then, but you have to make the pronouncement that now I accept this Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And verse 12 says, when you do that, one, what happens? You become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. And that, that's not only you, anybody that does that. And that's uh, uh, Romans chapter 10 also, verse 12 says, whether it is a Jew, whether it's in Canada, whether it's in America, whether it's black, whether it's Latino, whether it's uh, 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 Chinese or whatever, it doesn't matter. Your color, your race is irrespective. Anybody that believes on him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. And the beauty of it also is that it's only in Christendom that we have the opportunity to become what? The sons of God. The sons of God. There are other religions, they call themselves slaves. Some say, look, 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 there is no way you can even say God, uh, Jesus Christ is God. Well, it, this is about belief. 
It's about belief. You are free to believe what you want to believe. Some people worship stones. Some people worship deity. I, I was uh, in a place uh, many years ago. I went to preach, you know, and I went with some church member. I was a young pastor. So that uh, it's not too long, but all we have said today is how to become a child of God. The second part will be how to mature, how to mature. Hallelujah. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Well, again, I'm Pastor Amos Tada. I'm the district superintendent of uh, Christ Apostolic Church, Better Canada, uh, Toronto. Canada. And uh, if you are looking for a place where you want to worship, you are in this community, you are free to come with us. We worship every Sunday here. We are at 94 Kenha Drive, uh, Toronto. Um, yeah. And you are welcome. Also, we have uh, the International Garden of Eagles Conference, which we run every year. In uh, 2016, by the grace of God, we're going to have it from September uh, 16 to sept uh, September 15 to 16, and you are also welcome. By the grace of God, also we'll be going to many nations this year to share the leadership conference, which uh, we'll be going to Asia nations, we'll be going to the Philippines, we'll be going to uh, Thailand, we're we'll going to uh, South Korea, we're we'll going to Singapore and China. If you want to be part of all this, you are welcome. We are also going to Africa. And uh, you can also come to Angola, to Mozambique. Uh, you can reach us uh, from the contacts we are going to write down on the YouTube for us. Basically, uh, amos.dada at gmail.com. And you can uh, also check us out on our website, uh, www.cacbetter.com, as well as uh, www.igoeministry.com. Let me pray for you before you go. Maybe you have not given your life to Jesus and you want to do so. Please just say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this simple explanation of the word of God I've had today, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I pray, O oh God, that Lord, you will enter my life, write my name in the book of life. Every association that has led me to in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for welcoming me. I accept you into my I believe you in my heart and I confess you this hour with my mouth and I believe I am saved. Thank you, mighty God. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. I give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. My sister, my brother, if you have said that prayer, you are in the kingdom of God. You are in the kingdom of God. Look for a church near you, a Bible-believing church where you can go, where you can grow in the counsel of God. And uh, if you need Bible or other materials to grow, I like can say, please write a, uh, an email to us or give me a call, 416-616-2425. We will be able to assist you to the best of our financial abilities and spiritual guidance. Thank you and God bless you. In Jesus' name, Pastor Dada. Bye.